الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله خاتم أنبيائه وسيد أصفيائه المخصوص بالمقام المحمود في اليوم المشهود فصلى الله على النبي المختار وعلى آل بيته الأطهار وأصحابه الأخيار ونختص بالرضا ساداتنا أبا بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فأما بعد فأوصي نفسي وإياكم بتقوى الله فقد قال عز من قائل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Dear respected brothers and sisters, we start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most beneficent. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. Whomever of Allah guides will never be led astray. And whoever Allah allows to go astray will never find guidance. And we bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness that our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his prophet and messenger. And I remind you and myself to have God consciousness for he told us all you those who believe fear Allah like you should be feared and do not die except in a state of submission to him alone. And I remind myself and you the respected brothers and sisters to send abundant salutations upon your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam especially in this beautiful day of Jum'ah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and let us not be stingy with our salutations upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I stand before you, the respected brothers and sisters, to remind myself and everyone to take a moment and say Alhamdulillah. Take a moment and say Alhamdulillah for all the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. Alhamdulillah for the blessings that we are aware of. And Alhamdulillah for the blessings that we don't even think about. Alhamdulillah for the blessings that we asked for, then we were given. And Alhamdulillah for the blessings that we were given without asking for. And so many minute and detailed blessings that we don't even realize in our daily life, subhanAllah. As simple as our eyelashes or the moisture in our eyes. And subhanAllah, I, I knew someone who did not have that moisture in their eyes and they constantly need to put eye drops. And every few seconds they need to open their eyes so they can see properly. But we look and see all, all things beautiful around us without realizing it. Without putting any efforts because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that blessing to start with without us asking for it, subhanAllah. And one of the things that we need to be grateful and thank Allah for is the blessings that He allowed us to visit His houses of worship again, subhanAllah. Just a few weeks ago we were wondering if we're ever going to go back to our houses of worship, if we're going to go back to our masajid. And the decree of Allah came that He granted us permission and it's not because of our strength or witness that we're granted to come back. It's because of His mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. This trial was temporary and it should be lifted soon inshallah but it could as easily be longer. And nothing compares to, to the enjoyment of worshipping your Lord in the houses that He granted you permission to worship Him in subhanallah. You could listen to all the Qur'an you want on your phone. You could hear all the adhans from across the world and your favorite reciters and your device. But it does not equal sitting and hearing the beautiful voices of your brothers while you're in their presence in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this blessing came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to thank Him for it. We need to thank Him for every blessing that He has bestowed upon us. And we need to be grateful for two reasons. The first reason is being grateful holds that blessing from being taken away from you. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرْيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّةً يَاتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا رَغَدًا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ فَذَاقَهُ اللَّهُ لِبَاسَ الْجَوْعِ وَالْخُوفِ Allah strikes an example of a nation that used to be safe and its provisions come to it from every 
corner of the earth, but he was ungrateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested it with fear and hunger. So the first reason that we need to be grateful is so the blessings remain with us. As easily as we were granted permission to worship him again in his house is as easily as it could be taken away from us. So we're, we say alhamdulillah for this blessing that we're allowed to gather here in congregation on this beautiful day of Jum'ah. Second reason we need to be grateful is so these blessings could increase bi Allah. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in his metaphysical law, and it's as true as any other physical law. And your Lord decreed that if you're thankful, He will surely increase you. And this is a law that is true. If we're thankful for the blessings that we have right now, if we're thankful that we're allowed to congregate in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now, regardless of the restrictions. Some of us might complain that how can we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we're six feet away from our brothers? How can we worship when I have to come in with my own mask? How can I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I have to bring my own rug? And we start thinking of all the difficulties. But if we take a moment and realize that this is a blessing in itself, and we're thankful for that blessing, inshallah, Allah will increase the blessings that He bestowed upon us. Just like the so many blessings we didn't ask for, if we keep being thankful and ask for more of these blessings, inshallah ta'ala, His doors of mercy will open to us. And we need to make a quick distinction between shukr and hamd. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying be grateful, it's not as simply as stating it with your tongue. And there is reward in that, saying alhamdulillah for every provision with your tongue, with your, for every blessing that you have with your tongue. But the actual definition of shukr, of being grateful is like the poet said, وَالشُّكْرُ صَرْفُ الْعَبْدُ مَا أَوْلَاهُ مَوْلَاهُ مِنْ نِعْمَاهُ فِي رِضَاهُ is to spend all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you for his sake. He has blessed you with the blessing of sight, so you use it for his sake and you only see that which is beautiful. He has granted you the ability to speak, so you only use that for, it, for that which he granted and he give you permission to use it for. To call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call for justice. To say good words and to, to keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave you resources, He gave you wealth. And the gratefulness for that wealth is to use it as He asked you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the meaning of gratefulness, when He told Dawood alayhi salam, He said, وَعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُودَ شُكْرًا oh, The household of Dawood act in gratefulness. So gratefulness takes action. It's not something that you just say with your tongue. It's something that might take effort, might take time, might take resources, but that's how you're grateful for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. And no one was more grateful than our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a beautiful story that is narrated to us. A companion came to, to our mother Aisha radiallahu anha and he asked her what is the most strange or weird thing that you saw from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said all his affairs were strange. But she said the strangest moment that I could recall is a time that he came to my house, he came to my room. And he stayed in the same bed as me and he got as close to me that his skin touched my skin. And he said, Ya Aisha, would you give me permission to worship my Lord? Would you give me permission to stand in Qiyam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to worship Allah. She said, I love being near you, Ya Rasulullah, but I prefer that which you prefer. So I gave him permission. So he got up and he made wudu. And he stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he started to weep in his prayer, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would, he'd go, he would go to his ruku' and he's still weeping. And he would go to his sujood and he's still weeping. And that was his affair until Bilal came to inform him that the time for Fajr prayer is almost near. So when that was done, she asked him, Ya Rasulullah, how come you go through all of this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you that your sins are forgiven? Your past sins and your for future sins are already forgiven. Why are you doing so much to yourself? And there's a different narration that his foot has become swollen from so much standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer. He said, should I not be a grateful servant? Should I not be? 
a grateful servant. This is the reason he was standing in front of his Lord is for gratefulness. And the way he wanted to show his gratefulness is through action, not through mere speech. So let us stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be grateful for the blessings that we were given today. And let us not just praise him with our tongues, but also add to that praise with the tongues some action that shows that we are genuinely grateful for all these blessings that he has bestowed upon us. الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى فأما بعد As we said the respected brothers and sisters the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us are too many to count for he told us وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا And if you attempt to count the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon you you will not be able to enumerate you will not be able to count them so many blessings if you just take a moment and reflect so many blessings around us that we didn't even ask for the ability to breathe freely when others need help from machines to breathe the ability to see when others cannot the ability to walk when others cannot the ability to provide for our families when so many others are struggling and if we face one calamity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lifted others from upon us and in a beautiful story, a tabi'i was traveling. And after some time, there, a virus hit his foot and he need to, needed to be cut off. And when he was coming back from his travels, he was told that one of your kids entered the stable and a horse hit him and he passed away. Subhanallah, so many calamities one after the other. So he raised his hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show his gratefulness. And he said, Oh Allah, I had four limbs and if you took one away, you still left me with three. And I had four children, if you took one away, you still left me with three. If you have tested me today for such a long time, you have forgiven. And if you have taken something from me today for such a long time, you have given me. Subhanallah. This is the attitude that we need to have when it comes to gratefulness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And gratefulness is not something that it comes easy, it takes, it takes effort, it takes practice. That's why Umar radiallahu anhu entered the market and he, he saw a man raising his hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and calling with a dua that Umar didn't hear before. This man was saying, Oh Allah, make me from the few. Oh Allah, make me from the few. So Umar was confused and when he went up to him and he said, What is dua? I never heard this dua before. He said, Ya Umar, didn't you hear the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ and a few of my servants are genuinely grateful. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from that few which are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the most important things that we need to be grateful for today is the blessing that we're allowed and we're granted permission from the Most High to enter His houses again. And we show that gratefulness by not taking these houses of worship for granted. So many times when the houses were open all the time, we just take them for granted. We say, if I don't make this prayer, I'll just catch another one. If I don't go today, I'll go tomorrow, subhanAllah. But only now we realize that that permission might not be granted for tomorrow, subhanAllah. We need to be grateful for the houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us by maintaining them. By using our time and our resources and our money to spend in their way. To keep these institutions going. And we need to be grateful to these houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us to enter by being thankful to the people who serve them. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, he who does not thank people, he who is not grateful to people is not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us be grateful to those, in, to those individuals that serve these houses inshaAllah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be grateful with our tongues and to be grateful in our action. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be grateful for all the blessings that we have. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift this calamity from upon us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to enjoy meeting our brothers, socializing with our brothers and sisters in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift this calamity and these restrictions so we can go back to our houses of worship in a more comfortable manner 
for indeed he is able to do everything insha'Allah ta'ala wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam